Hi there, Darth Banjo here. I'm going to show you how to get up and started by creating a world in Foundry VTT with the essential uh, companion to Star Wars D6. So I'm in Foundry right now. Uh, I've got a couple of systems, a couple of worlds up and running, but I'm just going to create a brand new one. So we'll create a world. You'll title it something like Demo World. Then it creates a data path for you, and you you're going to need a couple a couple things to be up and running here. We're going to build this on Open D6 space, which is what kind of came out of the West End Games Star Wars uh, D6 game system. Uh, you can create a you can have a, a background image if you want. I will go and I will find my data directory. I've got an art folder, and I've got like a purple nebula that I'll upload here. You can fill out some sample text for your players and then create the world it takes a second and then it creates the demo world for you then i'll actually launch that world and you've got our purple purple nebula in the background you've got a drop down list i don't believe the default game master has a password and you can go ahead and you can join your game session that way so I mentioned that you're going to need a couple things. I guess by default, this blank world does not have any uh, modules attached to it. There's a very robust module marketplace. I guess most of it's free that you can install in Foundry. And I'm going to go over to my system settings and I'm going to manage my modules. I believe most of these are inactive at the moment. And what I'm going to go and find is a couple basic ones. I'm going to go find the Star Wars character sheets. So I can actually just search for sheets. Star Wars sheets for Open D6. And I'm also going to search for Essential, the Essential Companion to Star Wars D6 on Open D6 Space. I'll select those. It says, yes, I'd like to activate both of those uh, modules. And then I'll save those module settings and then your game actually restarts. So then you still need to get started. And one of the main things that you need to do first is some configuration to reskin Open D6 as Star Wars D6. So I'm going to go over to the settings box, game settings, and I'm going to configure my settings. I actually do have a starting checklist that I'll make sure to link to as part of this video. But if I go into system settings, there are several built-in components of Star Wars D6 that we can change. I'm going to look under my custom labels. I'm going to change fate points to force points. We'll customize the short name also to force points. Customize what do you want to say instead of use a, fa a fate point. We're going to say use a force point, question mark. The currency is credits. We can leave that or change it. Instead of vehicle toughness, we want it to say hull. Instead of starship toughness. Oh, no, it's body strength. And then hull. And these are just substituting out values that the Open D6 space system uses um, in, you know, instead of the, the actual Star Wars ones that we want to have displayed. What do manifestations call? Those are called force powers. Um, still, the plural of that is, uh, or the singular, rather, is force power. Um, Customize metaphysics name, the force, the abbreviation, you can still say the force. Metaphysics extra normal is force sensitive. The name of the channeling skill is control, sense, and alter. All of these come into play when you actually have your characters using force powers. It'll just substitute out those skill names, and you've got to make sure that you do have a control sense and alter skill in your game system. If you've installed the essential companion to Star Wars D6, you've got them. I've got them in a, a compendium somewhere. Let's scroll down. Agility in our universe is called dexterity. 
The agility abbreviation is dex, strength. Strength can stay strength. The strength abbreviation is str. Mechanical can stay the same. The abbreviation is mec, kno. Just down the line for your perception and your technical abbreviations as well. If you use the body point system, you can name that hit points if you want. I'm going to submit and we'll apply, it will apply those changes. We actually do have to have a custom field as well for dark side points. So we'll put that in sheet field one. We'll call it dark side points. We'll just copy and paste that. You can name that DSP or dark side points if you want. And it contains a number value. You uh, could potentially have that on your non-player characters as well. So you can select the first two for those dark side or Sith characters that you're creating. And then we're going to take a look at the rules options. For the wild die, we can leave the wild die there. The deadliness options, um, I leave this as default. There are some capabilities for you to drop the number of wound levels on your non-player characters, but uh, I would just leave it the same because then it messes with some of these other modules that I will talk about later. Uh, let's go down to rules options and just check all of these. We'll say we're going to use our wound levels. Uncheck, op make sure that optional damage is not checked. Um, we can hide advantages or disadvantages. Brawling in this system is strength, but again, up to your complete discretion. I've built the actual brawling skill as a strength skill. You just have to duplicate it and make it a dexterity skill if you want to change that. There is a special melee and brawling parry. You can take these things as a reaction. Um, we're going to lock our dis defense skills so that dodge can only be used against ranged attacks and parry against close combat attacks. The force point clears at the end of the round. The force point use uses are always climactic so that you, they affect all of the rolls in your turn. This is up to you as the game master to determine how you want this to, um, to work. So long as you've used the same dexterity, DEX, um, full names and the shortcuts, as well as those dark side points, uh, this will work just fine. We'll use strength for damage. Um, we'll hide the force as an attribute, so you just have those three skills, control, sense, and alter. We use dice for our scale modifiers. The starships have sensors, yes. There are some vehicle speed difficulty checks. Passengers take damage when the vehicle takes damage. Grenades have a decreasing level of damage as they go out every so many feet. So we're just checking all of these boxes here. And again, I'm following a checklist. I'll make sure to link to that checklist in the video. We've got difficulty levels for range. Melee weapons have a difficulty. Um, yeah, we'll use the currency value. So we'll use credits here. Um, again, funds, I don't particularly use that in my game, but that is an open D6 system that can replace credits if you so desire. You can use your hit dice locations. It's important to make sure that the pip per dice is three, which means that, you know, 1D plus 1, 1D plus 2, and instead of cycling up to that third category, it cycles over to 2D for your skills, values, damage. It's kind of the heart of the system. And I will uncheck flat skills. We'll submit that, save my changes, and I can actually hide the Open D6 compendium too. So you also have the ability to customize your default difficulty values as you so desire. I'm saving those changes. You can actually play now. <laughs> you could go in, start creating an actor or a scene to put them on. Let's call this space. You know, let's give it a uh, image in the background. We'll go back to look at the purple nebula. That's fine. And then we have an actual, you know, mat to play on. Some people, um, you can play either very tactical here using the grid. You can use theater of the mind, where your players never even leave one. Uh, scene 
totally up to you. Um, I think this is a good place to end this video, and maybe we'll do another one later on talking about some additional modules. Actually, no, first, let's go over to the actual um, compendium, this little compendium packs over here. So all of the work that I've been doing has been going into these different Star Wars D6 compendiums, where you could open it up and there's a long list of, you know, uh, equipment and... Uh, force powers along with a ton of cool icons as well as there's the actual long skill list here you can use these along with some stuff that I'm st working on right now which is the actual character templates and species templates you could go in you could create a brand new character actor let's call this Bob the Trandoshan One of the prerequisites is the Star Wars sheets, so you can actually drop down here and change this, change the default system sheet to the Open D6, no, Star Wars one, where it gives you that kind of faded gradient in the background, puts the photo in the upper right hand corner. You can then do this the hard way. You can go into your compendiums and you can go and you can find a special like template that you want drag it onto the character sheet and you give it a second for it to fill out and then it drops in all of the the templates here so you've got your actual character class if you will we don't really do those in this system but it's a template and then you would go and you would find a trend ocean species which is not built yet if you wanted to undo that you could go to free edit and you could clear your template choice and it would delete all of the skills inventory special abilities that that character has been given you could also then go in hunt and peck for various special abilities drag those on if you wanted one of the modules that I could talk about right now that makes my life much easier is I believe it's called search anywhere Let's go search maybe the quick insert I'll save that module the game will restart it will uh, kind of allow you to do a control space bar for indexing all of the compendiums. So then you can actually search for a wing. And I can then literally drag that token out here. Click on that, it's a ship. Again, we can change the default sheet to the Star Wars style sheet. It's got all of the values plugged in here. Um, maybe some other neat modules. I guess I'm just going to turn this video into the module video as well. I use a lot of fun stuff. Um, health estimate is important. Health estimate allows you, your players, at a glance to kind of see what's going on it, during a combat situation. Um, I use pings to kind of duplicate a function in Roll20 that lets your players point at something and say, what, what do I see over here? That kind of thing. Soundboard is a good one, as well as Star Wars Text Crawl. You can actually make a journal entry and then spin that into the old yellow text scrolling up. The soundboard lets you trigger Star Wars sounds. You've got to fill it with your own MP3s or MIDI or WAV files, but uh, it's fun as the, the game master to trigger the blaster or the R2 unit. I'm working on a couple of these modules. Token Action HUD is good. I'll turn on token action and health estimate, and I'll show you how they work in this system. So health estimate lets you hover over and see whether something is undamaged, or if they've taken light damaged, or you know, severe damaged, and it lets your players see at a glance what's going on with these these tokens. And I think actors do the same thing. Let's go find oh, your typical thug. So then, because they're different character types, you've got your uninjured. Severely wounded. You know, and then the, the values actually you can change manually. If you then actually go up into your configure settings, module settings, you can find your health estimate. Um, and you can change this to, you know, 
the actual Star Wars, such as healthy, wounded, stunned, you know, wounded twice, I guess that would be severely wounded, so on and so forth. Then you can match it up so long as you're putting these stages in a decreasing order and then you see that when you know someone is wounded or stunned um, that the actual text should match up. Again, I pulled out an NPC or a Game Master character here. Um, if your system settings is set by default to NPC deadliness being one less wound level, um, it's going to mess with that module. So then you actually then see the stunned drop down list here on that character sheet matching up with the actual stunned above his head. Um, I find that to be interesting. You've got your um, the ability to search for blasters with that um, search widget. And if they wanted a, an eWeb blaster, then you drag that on him. And, and he's good to cause some trouble for your players. I hope that helps. Um, I'm sure I'm missing a ton of stuff, but uh, this is a good start. Thanks for watching.